down payment, earnest money, option money, and a few others are all things that you need to consider and be aware of when preparing to buy a house. So how much should you save before beginning the process? I've got that answer for you coming up. Welcome to our channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Eric Coleman and I'm a licensed real estate agent with the PRC Properties Group and Fathom Realty here in Central Texas, where we specialize in serving those who serve with all their real estate needs. We put out a new video every Friday, so go ahead and consider subscribing to our channel so that you'll never miss an episode. Also, be sure to hang around to the end of the video for our random life hack of the day. And as always, don't forget to smash that like button. So how much money should you save before you be begin the process of buying your new home? I'm absolutely amazed at how many times I get asked that question by people who I honestly thought would have been aware of this already. So I decided to make a video about it. Now, let's keep in mind that the items I discuss here uh, are in accordance with the way a residential real estate transaction is conducted here in the state of Texas. So it might be different for your state. Having said that, let's get into it. So I think it's safe to say that the first thing that comes to everyone's mind when you're thinking about what you need to do to save for a house is down payment, right? And I'm happy to hear that because arguably it is probably the most important thing. But let me ask you, how much do you think that amount is? I'll bet you that a large number of people watching this video immediately went to, well, 20%. Duh, everybody knows that. Would it amaze you to know that that's not entirely correct? If that's what's keeping you from your dream of home ownership, I got great news for you and we're gonna talk about that right now. So there are three major loan products that the majority of home buyers use. They are conventional, FHA, and if, you have, uh, if you've served in the military and are eligible, your uh, VA loan. So we're gonna talk about those three. There are others, but and we can get into that in another video or I would encourage you to contact your local lender and they can explain all the options to you. But the first one is conventional. So for a conventional loan, if you're qualified by the lender as a first time home buyer, then technically speaking, you only need 3% down uh, or 3% of the purchase price uh, for that particular property down in order to purchase that home. That's great news, right? Because most people for conventional loans, that's what always gets that 20% tag. Now, if you're using FHA, which is a very popular loan product for several first time home buyers, then the minimum down payment is three and a half percent. And then if you're using VA, well, that's where it gets pretty cool because if you are eligible for that benefit, you can put as much down as you want, but in theory, you can get into it for 0% down if that's what you'd like to do. Now there is another loan product out there that you can also do 0% down and that's the USDA loan, but that's something I'll get into in a, in a, a later video. It's starting to feel pretty good, right? So the only difference though, is if you don't qualify as a first time home buyer. If your lender doesn't actually qualify you as a first time home buyer, which I need to check this, but I'm 99% certain that it's either, you know, you've never owned a home before, right? Or if you haven't owned a home within the last four years uh, prior to uh, your loan application as of right now, then you qualify as a first time home buyer. And that's what gets you those numbers that we just went over. If you're not a first time home buyer, then the only thing that changes in this process as far as minimum down payment is in the conventional loan and your loan would go from a minimum 3% to 5%. All right. So quick side note though, all of these are minimum down payments. Okay. Required for each of these loan products. It can vary based on your specific lenders policies and procedures and like such as credit worthiness, et cetera. So be sure to check with your lender to make sure that they tell you exactly what you need to qualify for the loan. So the next three things that we're going to talk about here, I'm, I call them upfront out of pocket costs. Okay. So the first thing that does come out of your pocket though, is earnest money. Now, typically earnest money is about 1% of the purchase price that can vary. All these numbers are negotiable. Um, but that's typically what it is here in Texas. Uh, the second thing is going to be option money. Now here in Texas, we have something called an option period. In the one to four family residential contract, which is the contract that we most commonly use when purchasing a home, that actually states the buyer's unrestricted right to terminate. For the purposes of this video, you're looking at $100 to $300, okay? Um, so that's always nice to have. And quite literally, you could wake up during that, you know, five to seven, 10 day period, whatever it happens to be, you could look up at the sky and say, I don't like the color blue, it's an omen. I'm going to terminate the contract. 
It happens, folks. So that's option money. The last out-of-pocket expense I'm gonna talk about is a home inspection. You gotta have a good home inspection. Now, is it required by law or required by the contract for you to do this? No, it's not. I would be a terrible real estate agent if I didn't try to talk my clients into making sure that they paid to have a third-party home inspection done before they move forward with the purchase of a home. And quite frankly, I don't know any real estate agent out there that feels any differently than I do. But just know, it's not required, but it is something that you probably will have done, so I consider that as part of your upfront out-of-pocket costs. Now, I've gone over the upfront pocket costs, so the rest of the stuff that we're gonna talk about is just gonna be what most people consider closing costs. So there's no way to know for sure what your closing costs are gonna be, but I have found that a good rule of thumb is taking about 4% of the total purchase price of that home and setting that aside as being your total closing cost. So how much should you save before buying a house? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, it just depends on what your certain situation is, your specific situation. Or are you trying to save for a $200,000 house or a $2 million house? It just depends on you and what you're looking for. Based on this example, you would need to save approximately $23,000 or $23,600 if your option and inspection money ended up on that higher end of our example here. So while this is no small amount of money, it's certainly much more affordable than what the majority of people believe is necessary to actually purchase a home, right? So hopefully this video has given you just a little bit more peace of mind when it comes to you having the necessary funds to purchase your home, maybe even your first home, which is what I see most often when it comes to not knowing what is needed, but it's not as hard as people think. Hopefully you got some sort of value out of this video. Hopefully it made you feel a little bit better. Again, gave you a little bit of peace of mind. And because, you know, like always here on this channel, um, we're always striving to create content that's relevant to you, the viewer, right? So if you receive value out of this video, we'd love to hear about it in the comments section below. If you wouldn't mind, just, just leave us your thoughts and tell us how we're doing. So we hope you enjoyed this video. So now it's time for your Random Life Hacker of the Day. To sew a button, scotch tape the button down to the fabric, sew through the scotch tape, and then tear it away. This way, the button stays where you want it and there's much less swearing. You're welcome. See you in the next video.